You're watching Greater Brockton, special candidates edition. Mark Lindy, your host. We've switched it up for the fall to get candidates for city council, councilor at large, mayor, and school committee. Tony Branch, welcome to Greater Thank Brockton. Thank you for having me, Mark. Thank you for having Good me. Good to see you. Now, you, a lot of times, are in the host chair. Yes. Now, I'm yes. turning it around. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, running for city council. You yeah. ran for school committee Correct. last cycle. Correct. And now you're running for city council. Correct. Um, People are familiar with you. Mm -hmm. they, they know your different community service, right. different organizations you're in. But tell the people that don't know who Tony Branch is about your service. Well, I, my service uh, in the community is, it extends uh, three decades, actually 30. People think I'm a, a, a lot younger than I am. But before we begin, I wanted just to, to make some uh, remarks about uh, Lieutenant Cullen and, and Officer Bates that had died members of the Virginia State Police uh, helicopter accident uh, during that unfortunate ride in Virginia and want to also say prayers for the Heather Hayer family. Mm -hmm. I think that the Brockton community clearly uh, is behind uh, some of the great work that we've done in terms of equality in the city, so I just wanted to acknowledge that. But again, you know, part of my work um, is, my work has been three or four fold, whether it's affordable housing, economic development, uh, community leadership and nonprofit management. Um, I bring a wealth of knowledge in those areas, so I think those competencies are, are helpful, not only in terms of the work that needs to be done in terms of the city council, but I think it's helpful in our role on the Southeastern uh, School Committee. So basically, I'm a community activist um, who, was n who was not interested, and I think there's a little confusion on that, was not interested in running for uh, Brockton City Council. Um, I had been pr approached by several people in the community asking me would I step in uh, to a race uh, because they were concerned about some of the um, uh, areas of concern how the city council was interacting with the mayor. Uh, and possibly thinking that we could do a better job in terms of being a little bit more transparent and a little bit more uh, open to the needs of the community. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. The relationship between mm. the city council and the mayor over the years, rocky, adversarial. Yeah, that's why I paused. Um, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not Because I love, I love a lot of them on the okay, city council. Okay, but but, just, but yeah. So here's the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our form of government right. is, is, a, is a plan B. Correct. Strong council, weak mayor. It's not really reality if you really think not about it. Not in the city it. of Brock. Okay. Yeah. Um, how important, you know, you, you always hear with banks and also, it's about the relationship. Right. So what about the relationship between the council and the mayor? You, you have a good relationship with right. the mayor. You work well with the mayor. He appointed you the chair of the diversity commission. Correct. So Correct. do you think that would be helpful if you got elected? I, I think it, I think coming from a community activist uh, sort of background would be quite helpful. I think also coming from the private sector as an executive would be helpful because you have to have those, those competencies and leadership where there has to be collaboration and teamwork. Uh, my concern, if I were to, um, to sit folks down and to certify them in leadership, I think my concern is, is that we publicly show our distaste at times for between the mayor's office and the city council. And again, it could be politics, some of it could be personal, but in terms of the community, we're looking at, the, we're looking at it as a body that's ineffective because we believe that the executive branch and the legislative branch of this city must be able to work in a collaborative relationship in order to get things done. So I, what, what I believe is in ordinances that we need, things that we need to get accomplished in the city require collaboration. I think that the concern that the community has, remember, Mark, and you know this, I'm really more of a community sort of guy. So I'm really with the community. So this, this is what they are telling me, that they need a voice on the council that's consistent with how they see things and uh, their expectations. They're not, the community, they're not politicians. They're just people that are looking for real change. It is real change because Ward 4 right. City Council Paul Stadensky has decided to retire. Correct. So this is a wide open seat. There's Correct. no incumbents. Not that incumbents right. hold the seat and it's their seat. Right. But he's... Stepping down. Right. So there's three candidates in the race. You mm -hmm. have two opponents. What do you have to offer differently than the two opponents? I know we haven't gotten you guys together in a debate. No, no. Yeah. What is the difference? Why should people? I'll yeah. give you a chance, depending on if we right. don't run out of time. Right. But at the end, to pitch it right directly to the voters. Right. But what's your, ex you talked about your expertise. Yeah. 
but what's different? You have two opponents. What do you... So, for you, and you know, and I, even when I've worked as a strategist with other campaigns, I'm hoping that we're getting to a point where we shy away from opponent. I think that what has happened, and especially in the climate of the country, it is, is very important uh, that we look at our opponents being lack of economic development, our opponents being lack of affordable housing, issues around public safety, uh, tax revenue for the city of Brockton. Those are our true opponents. I don't see uh, myself running against Susan. I don't see myself running against Derek. I see myself just bringing a different uh, philosophy on how things, how we can capture some, maybe some revenue, how we can do better in terms of uh, economic development. So I don't see that as uh, necessary as they being my opponent. Fair enough, though, good question. Paul Sedinsky has served in this seat for a while. He is, and we love Paul, he is a star on how we should actually be looking at the ward council's race. And one of the things I said in my kickoff, uh, I couldn't run this race without a Paul Sedinsky having been in the ward four, because I think that you need someone like Paul who has been on the ground with the people as I've been on the ground. So what I say to people, no, you're not getting another Paul Sedinsky, but you're getting someone that's really connected to the community and really understands your need. And re re really, understands your needs holistically. And I think that when you look at my, the other two people that are in the race, I don't think that you're gonna see necessarily the, the wealth of experience um, there that is needed to move us forward fairly quickly. One of the things that I've said um, to many political leaders in the city of Brockton and to community organizations that I'm a member of, whether it's Haitian Community Department, the Cape Verdean Association, Social Justice, um, whether I'm working on uh, 15, whether I'm working on Fair Share, you know, I've been working on state committees in order to enhance the livelihood of people in the city of Brockton, and I've been doing this for a while. So for me is that we could do a closing with me giving a pitch, but people really already know that I am a community guy really looking to validate their needs in the city council. So when you look at me holistically, I think that you, you get, with all due respect, the cream of the crop. Okay, so issues. What are you hearing? You had to go out and get signatures to get on well, the ballot. What are the people in Ward 4 telling you? Ward 4, one of the things right. about Ward 4 yep. that's a little tough, yep. you get a landfill, you get a sewage treatment plant. Right. There was a power plant that right, right, was right, getting ready. Right seems to be, right. no offense to Ward 4, the right. dumping ground. Right. That counselor has to right. uh, fight for his, his or her residence, depending on who gets elected. But um, you're ready for that fight? Because Ward 4, I remember, there was a Ward 4 election. Yep. Linda Balzotti, Cindy Jones, back yep. in the day, was a six-vote separation. Right. We had a close race in Ward 5 last election right. with a recount. Right. Brockton was the city that had a one-vote election in 81 for mayor. Right. So what are you hearing out there from the people? Well, so for with respect to Ward 4, um, as expected, there are several quality of life issues. Uh, people are not talking about, you know, and I was opposed to the power plant, but they're not talking about the power plant. What they are talking about is our elderly and disabled families that are coming from the, the Campello high rises that are nearly being hit by cars. They are talking about uh, uh, traffic enforcement. They're talking about traffic lights. They're talking about crosswalks. That's what they're talking about. Uh, they're talking about, uh, when I speak to the business leaders, many of my signs are in the businesses within the Campello uh, Square. Uh, they're talking about what are we doing in terms of a facelift. We want to have the commercial property look very, very professional and consistent. That's what they're talking about. And they're talking about neighborhood schools. Uh, you know, I'm a civil rights leader, and we fought very hard uh, for the, uh, 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 in terms of making sure that we had equality around our schools. Uh, but we're, we are getting to a point where people want neighborhood schools. They want their children uh, to remain in their neighborhoods within walking distance of schools. So we're talking, again, really quality of life issues. Uh, but with respect to traffic enforcement, uh, in Ward 4. Uh, it, is, it is sorely needed and it's something that I would be looking uh, to fairly quickly. What about one issue that's up, that's going to be up before the council? Desal. Mayor wants to buy the desal plant. What do you think about that? What I've said to people um, is they need to take a deep breath. Uh, people have challenged me on this and I've told them it's really about dollars and cents. If in fact it is more if it is financially feasible for us to purchase it to get rid of that six million dollars a year then we should do that 
It comes down to, do we pay $6 million for nothing, or do we buy something that we can use, and I believe we have some opportunities of selling that water. Now, I know that there are some discussions about around the MWRA. Uh, people, I remember when the, uh, I think it was, I think it was the Dukakis administration, but I remember when the MWRA uh, first opened up, and I forgot the gentleman who was executive, rec executive director. Paul Levy. Yeah, Paul, exactly, Paul Levy, that's right. And he actually became my president at uh, New England Medical Center. But with that said, I remember uh, how, quite frankly, efficient the MWRA was. Uh, so that may be an opportunity. But again, the rate players of the city of Brockton are the ones that are stuck with $6 million a year for nothing. If that was you or me out of our own pocketbook, you would have some concerns about it. And I think, of the, I think we're playing politics with this, and we shouldn't be. It should be about revenue. Okay. I got the three-minute queue. Oh. Yeah, I don't okay. know if you want time to summarize, but one quick question. Sure. Education, education, education. Yep. You hear real estate, real estate, real right. estate. So right. It's been talked for years that the south side of Brockton needs another school. True. What would you do differently to make that happen or... In, in light of that question, I'll try not to do the question too right, long. Right. City may sue again, the state. It all started in Brockton. Education reform started out of Brockton. We had the original Webby versus Dukakis. Right. So, yeah. I, so I'm for the, the lawsuit, but I think that I'm concerned, and this is uh, one of the things that I've been discussing uh, throughout the city. So in order for the, the Department of Revenue to maximize its total number of dollars that need to come into the city, we need to also look at our two and a half levy. And I think that um, what has happened in the city of Brockton, and one of the things that I want us to do is that it, the city, people have talked to me about how they can have a conversation at the city council. I think that we need to open up uh, our hearing of visitors at the city council because I think that people are not understanding what's happening in terms of that, that two and a half. And if they understand that they need to, we need to be able to maximize those dollars from the Department of Revenue, then they will be able to say, okay, we understand why we don't have a school, we understand why we're not getting the total dollar. My point to you is this, I support the lawsuit, but I think that we really need to have an honest conversation with the ratepayers regarding how we are assessing the two and a half. I got the two. I think I might have one left. <laughs> okay. Website, phone number, how to get in touch with you, and, and, and I'm, wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. I want you, please, 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 please feel free to email me directly, bishopbranch at icloud.com. Please see me on Facebook. Just Google Bishop Branch. Do not look at fake news on me, though. There was some fake news of regarding um, my decision to pursue the changing of house master to Dean. But with that said that I love the city of Brockton and I thank you Mark for having me and I am going to miss Paul. I'm going to miss him tremendously and let's see how this race goes. Sounds good. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. Very God much. bless. Same God bless here. Brockton. Same here. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates leading up to the September 19th preliminary election. Just make sure you do your civic duty and go out and vote. Research the candidates, look into their backgrounds, talk issues, and most of all, go to the ballot box. Thanks for joining us and thanks for watching. You'll be seeing all the election coverage on Brockton Community Access.